Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we're going to do a long and Bible study. We're going to take the long way. And I titled this study, What are the Ordinances in Colossians 10? Colossians 10. Right? Some people think, are trying to push the ordinance in there. It's just culture. It's just culture. It's traditions of men. It's uh, rudiments of the world. It's uh, ordin you know, that's the ordinance. That's what they say. But is that true? Are what's mentioned in Colossians 2, the ordinances, just traditions of men? It's just culture. It's the Gentile culture, the Jewish culture. We're going to be taking the long way. 2 Timothy 2.15. Before we really get started, I want to hash some things out. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What's verse 16 say? But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase into more ungodliness. Okay, when you have people saying, oh, these ordinances, it's just ordinances, it's just ordinances, you know. These ordinances, they're, they're uh, culture, traditions of men. We're going to find out through this study that that's, that's profane bab and vain babbling. Okay, that's not true. We're going to take the long way. The reason we're going to take the long way is I really want to get this hammered in. What's really going on here? And brothers, sisters of Christ, what we're really fighting today. What's going on and what we're fighting today. Okay. The big push in the body of Christ. They chant culture, tradition of Gentiles in Colossians chapter 2. Culture, the Gentiles, or culture of the Jewish people. Uh, it's neither. Okay. We're going to find this out. You can turn to Colossians chapter 2 verse 1. We're going to start out in Colossians, and we're going to end in Colossians. Colossians 2, 1, and we're going to read to 5. For I would have that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for, them, for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be com comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches a full of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mysteries of God. Remember Paul said the gospel was presented to him? He says it's my gospel, but then he turns around and says uh, that you follow me as I, as I, be a follower of me as I am of Christ. Okay. What's he talking about mysteries here? Acknowledgement. He's talking about salvation. Okay. To the acknowledgement of the mysteries of God and of the Father and of Christ in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Beguile you with enticing words. What did we just read in 2 Timothy 2.16? But shun profane and vain babbling, for they will increase to more ungodliness. When people start straying from the word of God, or making a mistake in the word of God that leads to sin, it's just going to lead to more ungodliness. Enticing words. Beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. That's what this is about. Turn to Acts 15. Now we started out in Colossians. Paul's talking about he loves the brethren. He's got a conflict going on. What is that conflict? Well, we're going to go through a lot of the Pauline epistles and show you exactly what that conflict is. Okay, But it all starts in Acts. Okay. Turn to Acts 15. Pause the video and read verses 1 through 31. We've got a lot of verses to go over, so I'm going to stop and go over certain verses along there. But stop and read that whole passage. Pause the video. Acts 15, 1 through 31. Okay. Now, uh, verse 5. It says, in Acts 15, 5, says, but, they, but there rose up a certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed. Let that sink in for a second. They believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. They believed in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And later on, we're going to find out, they didn't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. But they believed. Where do we get that you can believe in vain? You can turn to 1 Corinthians 15.1 or just hold there if you already know these verses. Um, 
1 Corinthians 51 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand the changed life. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye had believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which was received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and how he was buried, and how he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You see, today you can have people that believe in the death, burial, see, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But they don't believe it is finished. When Jesus said it is finished, they don't believe that. These Jews we just read about in verse 5 said that they believed, but then they said it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. Now think about this real quick as we go through this study. What Paul is dealing with here is he's got the Jews coming in and trying to destroy the true plan of salvation. They're trying to bring in works. They're trying to bring in circumcision. They're trying to bring in the law in order to be saved. Okay, now think about this. As we go through this, Paul's having to deal with the Jews doing this. But in 70 AD, God just, I think it was around 70 AD, God destroyed the temple, so the animal sacrifices stopped, and a lot of the, the obeying the laws of Moses, a lot of that came to a stop. Okay. The point I'm trying to make here is, is the Jewish, think of this, God has his, remember what Satan likes to do. Okay, Satan, it says it's for no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, and for no marvel that his ministers also be transformed into the ministers of righteousness. Satan likes to counterfeit God. He wants to be like God, and he counterfeits God all the time. But he's always a poor counterfeit. And please understand what I mean by that. If you don't have this right here, He's going to look like the perfect counterfeit in the world. You couldn't, you couldn't tell the difference between him and the real Jesus Christ and God. But when you get saved and you're seeking the real Jesus Christ, the real capital G God, he gives you his word. And through his word, we can point him out and say, you're a poor counterfeit. You're a phony. You're a fake. You're a fraud. Okay? So let's look at this. Satan wants to be like God. So God has a chosen set of people. The Jewish people. Satan today has his chosen people, Catholicism, and her daughters. All these false religions that are basically under the umbrella of Catholicism, Catholic Church. I mean, all these false religions, not uh, all these denominations, um, mu uh, even Muslims. Um, there's a brother that did a great study on Muslim religion and who helped create the Muslim religion, why they have so many things in common with the Catholic core. Okay? Uh, they both have a Mary that they, they elevate above a regular person. Okay? Um, but you have Mormons. You have Jehovah's Witness. You have all these different denominations, Babel buildings, and stuff like that. You have all these false religions that are daughters under the whore. Okay? So you have Catholicism. I call them class, closet Catholics, is what they are. Okay, there is no different religions of the world. There's just two. There's true biblical Christianity, and there's closet Catholics, if you really want to look at it. Okay, they've infiltrated through the Jesuit order, whole other thing, infiltrated all religions to bring them back into the world. In most cases, they've created the religions. They create a lot of the false religions. Okay. So God's got his chosen people, Satan's got his chosen people, Catholicism. Okay? God has his sacrifice, the, the Jewish people making their sacrifice, Satan has his people doing sacrifices. You know, the Eucharist. Okay. God has his laws for his chosen people, the laws of Moses, the Levitical laws for the Jewish people and those dwelling with the Jews. Guess what? Satan has his laws. The Catholic ordinances and the Catholic way and the Catholic way of doing things. Their laws. And remember, wherever the Catholic, like the Pope and everything, when the priesthood or the Pope say something that goes against Scripture, you're supposed to listen to them instead. Because their laws are what's important. Their ways of doing things. The, the catechism. Okay? Think about that. Brothers. There's a lot of counterfeit going on. So what 
as we read this, what Paul was dealing with the Jews coming in and just trying to destroy the gospel and what he was preaching and teaching, God was preaching and teaching through him, we're still having that same struggle today with easy believism, getting ahead of myself, but with easy believism, Catholicism, and atheists. Paul was dealing with the same thing back then. People that were forgetting the first and second Corinthians that were getting deceived into easy believism. And as we get into Galatians and some of the other chapters, uh, all, all the chapters, even first Corinthians, all the different Pauline epistles, someone's coming in trying to pervert the gospel into something you can do to earn it. Works, Catholicism. And he's always trying to preach to people who don't believe in God at all. Remember, when we were lost, we were without capital G God, without hope and without God in the world. Okay? So remember that when we go through there. Okay? Bottom line, the Jews did not believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We see that there when they said, they which believed, saying that it was, it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. And as we get to, I think it's uh, Galatians, they're telling them that they can't be saved unless they get circumcised and keep the laws of Moses. Okay. They didn't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. They believed in the death, burial, and resurrection, but they didn't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Catholicism, they don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay. Jump down to verse 10. It says, Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the necks of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? What does it mean by the, our fathers and we were not able to bear? It's talking about the Jews. Okay? They were told, here's the law, you have to keep them in order to, in order to be saved. And they couldn't keep them. How do you know? That's why they had animal sacrifices. They sacrificed animals to cover the sins. They couldn't keep the law themselves. Okay. Verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. The finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Even as they... For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls. Subverting your souls. What are they doing? They're trying to pervert the gospel. Saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these things, these necessary things. And here's the thing. That ye abstain from meats offered unto idols, false gods. You're abstaining from false gods. You can't get away from that. But some brethren try to. And from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication. Um, there's another part in the Bible that talks about, therefore flee, forni uh, flee idolatry. And in that passage it talks about fornication along with idolatry. How they kind of go hand in hand almost. Okay, you start idolizing the flesh and you're idolizing that person. What happened to um, Solomon? He started idolizing the women, the strange women that he married. And they turned his heart away from God to false gods. Okay, false gods turned into idolatry. So, I just want to throw that in there. From which, if ye you keep yourselves, ye you shall do well, farewell. Now, one thing that, that uh, a brother in Christ did out a big challenge saying, where is it saying here, and I've had other brethren do it, where is it saying here we can't keep Christmas? I had brothers, uh, professing brethren come in and say, where does it say we can't keep, uh, play video games? Where does it say we can't play video games and watch Hollywood movies? Where does it say we can't listen to any music and all kinds of music that we want? We call them satanic style music because there's music that entices the flesh to get the flesh riled up, and then there's music that brings peace to your soul. Then there's emotional music, but that's still riling the flesh up just in a different way. There's riling up the flesh where you want to bounce off the walls, the kind of music I used to listen to when I worked out at the gym. I don't do that anymore. And then you have the kind of music that really riles up your flesh as far as the emotions, getting your emotions going and everything. But there is music out there that's very peaceful. But they're all like, where does it say you can't do this? Where does it say you can't do this? Brothers and sisters in Christ, my advice to you is stop worrying about what it doesn't say and start focusing on what it does say. The lost world loves to come in and try to complain and say, where does it say this? Where does it say that? So let's pull the lost world card and act just like him. Um, where does it say here I have to read my Bible? 
Brother says, Christ, where does it say I have to read my Bible? It doesn't say that. So I guess I don't have to read my Bible. Well, no, you compare Scripture with Scripture. 2 Timothy 2.15, Say, show thyself approved unto God. We're supposed to study the Word of God and we're supposed to apply it to our life. Where does it say here you can't get drunk? It said you will do well. You know, if, all you have to do is abstain from meats offered unto idols and from blood and from strang things strangled and from fornication. That's it. So drunkenness must be okay, right? No, because you compare Scripture with Scripture. You're not supposed to be drunken. All right. Women dress in hair. I guess women can cut hair short and wear men's apparel and be immodest and everything because it doesn't mention it here. But you compare Scripture with Scripture and it talks about the three commands all through the Bible. There's three commands God gives on the appearance of a woman. Okay, I guess it doesn't say here that the men are to provide for their own. I guess we don't have to provide for our own. You see how that works, brothers and Christ? You don't sit here and say what it doesn't say. You focus on what it does say and what is going on here. The main point that's going on that we got to learn from this, brothers and Christ, is that the Jews are coming in and they're bringing the Gentiles back under the law. Circumcision and the law. They're getting them back to where you've got to earn salvation. You've got to earn it. Is that still going on today? With the Jews? Not so much. With Catholicism that are counterfeiting the Jews? Satan has his people. God has his chosen people. Is it still going on though today? Absolutely. Through the Catholic Church. Okay. And then some people are like, ah, no, that's just here though. That's just here. Uh, turn to Acts 28. What happened to Paul? Acts 28. How many times did Paul have chosen here in Acts? It shows three times that Paul went to the Jewish people to try to preach the, Jesus Christ to them, the truth. This is the third, this is the um, second time, second time, I think. Acts 28, starting in verse 16. No, no, this is the third time. Okay, this is the third time. Verse 16, and when, it, when he came to Rome, we have, we're going to get to the point of what happened to Paul, but I'm jumping ahead. But since I mentioned it, I'll say it. What happened to Paul? There was, there was Jews that believed the results of the law. And we're going to find out what they did to Paul in the end. How did Paul get to Rome? Because the second time he tried to preach to the Jews, they tried to kill him. First time they tried to kill him. Second time they tried to kill him. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoner to the captain of the guard, but Paul was suffering to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. Now why are we reading this? before we get to Rome, Romans, is to show that there was Jews in Rome. There's even parts where Romans is written where it's, he's addressing Jews, even though it's written to Romans. Romans is written to Christians at Rome, whether they be Jew or Gentile. Remember that. Okay. Soldiers that kept him. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans by Jews that believed. We'll get to that. Verse 18, Who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called you, to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. Jesus is the hope of Israel. He's our hope, but he's also the hope of Israel. And they said unto him, We neither received letter out of Judea concerning thee, neither out of the brethren have they came, showed, or spake, or any harm of thee. But we desire to hear thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know not, I see, we, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Talk about Christians. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. Now, real quick, a side note. People try to take this and say, look, Paul was, was debating. He was debating him all day. No, he wasn't. Paul didn't debate anybody. He preached truth. 
And what did he do when they didn't want the truth? 24. And some believing the things which were spoken, some believed. So you had Jews that got saved in Rome. And some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall not hear, and shall not hearing ye shall not hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart. Oh, remember we always talk about come back to a heart issue. It's not a head issue, it's a heart issue and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came into him. It's not that people also try to grab this and say, oh, that's ministry headquarters, right? No, it isn't. Paul's under house arrest in Rome. Okay, verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. He was preaching the word of God, people were getting saved. There were some Jews that got saved. For this study, focus on that. Some Jews got saved. I want to bring that up because when we go into Romans, because it leads right into Romans. Turn to Romans chapter 2. It leads into Romans. And people say, well, Romans are just written to Romans, right? Just Gentiles, right? Well, as we read through some of these, because there's going to be a few, we're going to see how he addresses some of the Jews in these. But number two, Romans 2, verse 17 through 19. Behold, thou art called a Jew. Wait a minute, this is Romans. It's only written to Gentiles. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and resistest the law, and makest thy boast of God. Once again, what do we have going on here? You have Jews that believed, and then you have Jews that didn't believe. Now, it doesn't say it's particular which ones are coming in and messing them up, but one of them are messing them up. Try to tell them they have to keep the law in order to be saved. That's what's going on in Romans 14. Behold, thou art a Jew, and resisteth in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness? Yeah, I'm saved because I keep the laws. An instructor of the foolish? Remember, when you use the word fool, you're saying someone who doesn't believe in God. But when you say someone's acting foolish, you're saying they're acting like a lost person. They're not acting like a man of God, a child of God. They're acting like the lost world. A teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. A form of knowledge? You know, like head knowledge? Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? But not the finished, they don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ? Thou therefore which teachest others, teachest not thou th thyself that thou preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest to a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou of the poorest idols, does thou commit sacrilege? Remember what Peter said? Why would you put a burden on them that we couldn't even bear? We failed the Lord, and we didn't keep the law completely. So why are you guys doing it? It's also talking about hypocr hypocritical judgment. Telling people they have standards that they have to keep, but you have different standards, and I'm above you. Yeah. Verse 23. Thou that makest thy boasts of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy uncircumcision is made uncircumcision. And my notes here I have, in the Old Testament, if you broke the law, you were cut off from Israel. That's the whole point, brothers of Christ. The Old Testament, your body and your soul were connected. So when your body did something 
It affected your soul. There was a lot of laws and a lot of things that if you broke and profaned the Sabbath day, you profaned the holy days, uh, new moon, there was ordinances that, that if you touched something you weren't supposed to touch, you were unclean and everything. And when you were cut off, and the Bible talks about being cut off from Israel, it's like losing, it is you losing your salvation. It would be the equivalent of losing your salvation today. You can't lose it today. But the point is, is they're trying to bring you back under the law and get you to think you can lose it. Because if you break the law in the Old Testament, you lost your salvation. You were cut off from Israel. And even though you were circumcised, you were counted as uncircumcised and treated as uncircumcised. That's where... Victoria likes to scratch. That's where you get the uh, Samaritans, I believe. They're Jews that have been cut off. Okay. But that's what Paul's talking about here. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thou, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. You are cut off from Israel. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keepeth the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee? What's the law he's talking about here, though? The law of God. That spiritual circumcision made without hands. The new creature in Christ Jesus. Who by the letter and circumcision does to transgress the law. Okay? We have uncircumcision. They're truly getting saved, born again. And if they break the law today, they have that spiritual circumcision. The body and soul are no longer connected. connected. My soul is connected to another body right now. And that body is Jesus Christ. And He is perfect and clean. Okay, my soul is clean. My body, it's a different story. But now when my body today breaks the laws, doesn't get circumcised, uncircumcision, breaks the laws, it doesn't affect my soul. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outwardly in the flesh. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and the circumcision is that of the heart and in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. What did we read over there in Acts chapter 5? They had to be, they're telling them you had to be physically circumcised and keep the laws in order to be saved. Why is Paul, ha yeah, why is Paul having to talk to the Romans, talking to Jews among the Romans, telling them, uh, no, all over again, no. You don't have to be circumcised and keep the law in order to be saved. Right? You don't. Turn to Romans 10. I'm just bringing this up because we're going to get into it. Paul is having to fight Jews that are coming in and ruining what he's preaching. The gospel. The changed life. The circumcision made without hands. Yes, there's a changed life. Yes, you live for the Lord. Yes, He commands you what to do and what not to do still. But it's not the way the Old Testament was. That's not how you get saved. In the Old Testament, you had your sins covered by making spirit sacrifices and keeping the law. That's not how it is today. Mm -hmm. Turn to Romans 10. Romans 10, chapter 1 through 3. I'm sorry, Romans chapter 10, verse 1 through 13. 1 through 13. Excuse me, brothers. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer for God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now, now he's talking to brethren. It could, when he's talking to brethren, predominantly, I'm pretty sure it's predominantly Gentiles at Rome. But there's probably Jews that were there that were saved back then. Okay, But he says, Israel as a whole might be saved. For I bear, re bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Do we see that today with the Catholic Church and Catholicism out there? They're going about to establish their own righteousness. They're a counterfeit of God's people. In the Old Testament, keeping the law and doing the animal sacrifices, it could deceive them into believing that they're establishing their own righteousness. They're still going about it today. There's still that Satan still has that push today with his counterfeit church and counterfeit chosen people and commands and whatnot, all counterfeit, 
trying to get you to go back to establish your own righteousness. And that's the proper Bible term. One thing that you don't hear me say that much anymore is that uh, you've got to drop your self-righteousness. you got to drop yourself. There's no such thing as self-righteousness. Okay, please hear me out. When you say self-righteousness, you're saying you can establish a righteousness that's apart from the righteousness of God. No, you can't. The Bible says that they, they go about to establish their own righteousness. They're trying to have their own righteousness, but they're going to fail every time. Every time. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Now, I'm not against you if you say self-righteousness. I'm just letting you know the reason I don't really say self-righteousness anymore is because the Bible doesn't say you can have your own righteousness. It says you go about to establish your own righteousness. But there's only one righteousness, and that's of God. It's Jesus Christ. Verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. Wait a second. He's explaining to the brethren at Rome the difference between getting saved by the law and being having Jesus save you and having his righteousness imputed to you. I think it's Romans 8 or 7. He talks about Abraham. Not 8. It was like 7 or 6. He's talking about Abraham and his uh, faith is counted for him for righteousness versus the law. Here we are again. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of the of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down from above. What does the Catholic Church do with the Eucharist? They're bringing Christ back down to be sacrificed over and over and over. This condemns it right there. Where is Jesus at right now? He's in, he's in his Father's house. God the Father. He's in heaven. That's what God, that his father, my Father's house. I go to my Father's house to prepare... Oh no, in my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go there to prepare a place for you. That's where Jesus is right now. And you've got these religions trying to bring Jesus back down. Trying to bring sacrifice back. Just like what the Jews were doing. They're still trying to continue the sacrifices. Verse 7, Or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again from the dead? People who, you know, who don't really believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about. You don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. preach. And I wanted to read this part. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Shalt be. Future. Past tense. You've got to confess it. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Oh, you don't have to confess your repentance and your belief. You don't have to ask God to save you. It says it happens before salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You have all these professing Christians out there in the world. They're completely ashamed of the real Jesus Christ of scripture. They're completely ashamed of him. For there is no difference between the Jew and the, Gen the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call does not mean believe, it means ask. But for this study, brothers and sisters of Christ, Paul, once again, among Romans, it's supposed to be for Gentiles only, he was writing to Jews, talking, addressing Jews, among the body of Christ, the Jewish, so the Jewish Christians, some probably were saved, I believe some of them weren't, because they were zealous of the law, and they didn't really truly believe in the finished work, excuse me, they didn't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. But here we see it again. The law is brought in. Is that it? You know, oh, okay, okay, I see your point. And Acts, when they were talking about how the Jews are coming in, it, maybe it's just Rome, because he had to go to Rome and he preached to the Jews there. It just happened in Rome. But it didn't happen in, in Corinthians. He didn't have to mention the law, did he? Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. 
Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you. You know how we have divisions today, brothers and sisters of Christ? Sometimes it's over stupid stuff. It's important stuff, or else it wouldn't cause division, but something that's like, why are you even... You know, the one side's completely wrong and just won't give it up with pride, and the other side's following the Scriptures. But back here, when he says division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Judgment. What I believe he's talking about, the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You got people coming in and messing up the gospel. And there's division. Oh, no, you got to get circumcised in order to be saved. No, 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 you don't have to. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, no, you don't. You got to keep the laws of Moses also to be saved. Oh, no, we don't. We just have to keep the law of God, the spiritual kingdom. Oh, you see the division? For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chol, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I am of Papalus, and I am of Cephas, and I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that I have baptized in my own name. Excuse me, this is the next book, because I kind of got ahead of myself when I was talking about the division I believe that's going on here is you got the easy believism. Paul still brings in the law, but you got easy believism. That's what's going on here. And the division is this. Uh, what you're doing there is wickedness. Oh, no, it's okay. No, it isn't. No, it's okay. I can just do an animal sacrifice like the Jews did. I can do good works to make up for my bad works. you got the easy believism going through here. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus, besides I know not whether I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words. People coming in and destroying the gospel that he's preaching. Lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of cross is to them that perish foolishness. Remember? Fool said in his heart there is no God. And when you're being foolish, you're acting like the lost world. It's foolish to reject Jesus Christ, to refuse to repent. There's, there's, there's people out there claiming to be Christians that refuse to repent. The Bible definition of repentance. For godly sorrow worketh repentance unto salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. True biblical repentance, they refuse to do it. But they believe in the finished, uh, not the finished work, but they believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and they refuse to, some of them even refuse to pray. Confess both in prayer and ask God to save them. But it's foolishness to them. But unto us which are saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath God not made the foolish the wisdom of this world? And I'm going a little bit farther than I wanted to. The point is, is you have people coming in and saying, that gospel that you were saved off of? No, that's not right. That's not right. You have people coming in. And Paul's saying, uh, what are you doing? You're messing up the gospel. To some people, the gospel is foolishness. Turn to 1 Corinthians verse 7. So you got people coming in and messing things up. Just like what we read up there in Acts 5. You have a certain sect of the Pharisees, which believed, were saying that you had to be circumcised and keep the laws of Moses in order to be saved. So you had someone coming in and messing up the gospel. The true plan of salvation. Do we have that going on today? There's so many different types of Christians out there. You got Mormons calling themselves Christians. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses call themselves Christians. Catholic calls themselves Christians. All these different denominations like to call themselves Christians. You know I mean? You have people coming in and now you're saying, I'm of this person and they're trying to follow that person. I'm of the Pope. I'm a Catholic. I've got to do what the Pope says. Even if it goes against Scripture, I've got to follow the Pope. Even if it goes against the true plan of salvation in the Scriptures, you're supposed to ignore the Scriptures. That's what, what's being preached in this world today. With all these, easy believism, all of it. They're being taught that whatever that man up there says, that's what you follow. It's not the Word of God. 1 Corinthians 7, 17. But as God hath distributed to every man as the Lord hath called everyone, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all the churches. 
Is any man called being circumcised? You mean there was Jews there trying to tell them that they had to be circumcised? Any man called being circumcised, let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. You know what he's saying? If you're a Jew and you're already circumcised, don't start screwing things up and start acting like a lost person and become uncircumcised. Okay? You have the true plan of salvation. Don't screw it up. And if you're uncircumcised and you get saved, don't believe that circumcision is going to save you. Remember the true plan of salvation. Verse 19, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. Today it is. In the Old Testament, it wasn't that way. In the future, it's not going to be that way. But today, it is. Why? Because we got that spiritual circumcision made without hands. Our bodies aren't connected to our souls anymore. When our body screws up and sins and, and everything, it doesn't taint our soul. We're going to have to answer for our mistakes at the judgment seat of Christ, but it's not going to destroy our soul. We can't lose our salvation. It's not ours to lose. But the keeping, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, but the keeping of the commandment of God. Today the commandment is you're supposed to keep the law of God. You're supposed to, um, what was the commandment? Um, obey the gospel. We're to obey the gospel. That's the command of God. I'm commanded to repent. Verse 20, let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. If you're a Jew and you're circumcised, then you're circumcised. If you're a Gentile and you're uncircumcised, then remain uncircumcised. Okay. What matters is salvation. Today, what matters is salvation. 21. Art thou called? Art thou? No, we don't go keep 20. Let every man abide in the same calling wherewith he's called. Okay. What's going on there? Somebody was coming in and trying to push circumcision again. Yeah, I'd be circumcised. It's out. Trying to bring in works in order to be saved. Try to bring in works. Uh, 1 Corinthians. If you want to pause the video, like I always said, pause and turn if you want to. But this is a long study, so we're going to cut through these really quick. 1 Corinthians 9.20 And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. What's Paul talking about? Under the law. To them that are under the law, as under the law. That I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without law to God, but being under the law to Christ. I did a study that upset some of the easy believism because they put out a study, we're not under any of the laws anymore. And I had to do a study and say, well, uh, that's not true. We're not under the Levitical laws of Moses, but we're still under the law of God. Okay, The law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're still under a law. Okay, that's why Paul had to say this here. Being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ. Everybody's under a law of some kind. Period. That I might gain them that are without law. Okay. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 we read, For by one Spirit are, are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Once again, he's, you have Jews come in saying, no, 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 we've got to get you back under the law, back under the law. And Paul's having to say, no, Jews or Gentiles. Okay, there is no difference. Whether it be bond or free, and have been all made to drink in one spirit. Remember, there's neither Jew nor Gentile today. It's talking about spiritually. They're still physically Jews today, and they're still physically Gentiles today, but we're talking about when it comes to salvation. Now turn to, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 through 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Praise the Lord. Brethren, I'm going to keep pointing at you. Keep looking for that blessed hope. Keep looking for that blessed hope, brothers and sisters of Christ. We're getting near the end. We're running a race. You know, we're supposed to run the race as if only one receiveth the prize. We're running a race and we're getting to the end. 
Verse 50, for this corruption must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And here's the point. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is what? The law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been freed from the law of sin and death, and that's what the Levitical laws were all about. Showing that you are under the laws of sin and death. The laws, the Old Testament laws, are a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. So we can have victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, don't turn your back on the true plan of salvation. All right? Don't turn your back on living for Jesus Christ every day. Why? Because it says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. There's times that we're working and it seems like it's vain and it's, it's not. But the point of this, brothers and sisters Christ, is that they're trying to bring him back under the law. Well, the laws were just a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. But they, the Jews keep getting stuck under the law. Remember what the Bible said? I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but it's a stumbling block. To them, it's a stumbling block. The true plan of salvation. That there's one God, and you can get saved through Jesus Christ. You mean I don't have to keep the laws? They can't handle it. They, they've got to have laws. They've got to have laws. It's a stumbling block to them. And to the, uh, to the Greeks, foolishness. Why? Because the thought of just one God? Look at the Catholic Church. They believe in God's plural. Look at the pagan trinity. God's plural. So you see a contrast in Corinthians even that he has to bring in talking about circumcision. Okay, he talks about how the law has no strength when we, have, when we go through Jesus Christ. But more than anything, I believe in 1 and 2 Corinthians it's talking about uh, that the people are coming in with easy believism. There's some Jews there that are saying, hey, you've got to be circumcised. Remember, the Jews are scattered all over. But what you see there more than anything is just, oh, here's your belief now, and you can continue in sin. Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Turn to Galatians chapter 1. So the biggest thing there with, with the Corinthians is that somebody was coming in and perverting the gospel. No, you've got to do this to be saved. They're coming in and perverting the gospel in the sense that it isn't finished. I've got a, the, the, the sin that, God, that Jesus had to face on the cross. I remember doing a study on this and it really upset the easy believism. It's not finished. I've got to sin as much as I can and keep whipping Jesus Christ and beating him up on the cross and everything as much as I can. So then that grace will really abound. They, didn't, they don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. They refuse to repent. They refuse to take the new life that God is presenting them with a new life, a new creature in Christ Jesus. No, I'm just going to believe and continue living and looking like the lost world, acting like the lost world, laughing at the lost world, just continue and sin and sin and sin and sin. What's going on? They don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross with the life that they're living. Galatians 1 6. This is a big, big, big <laughs> uh, letter to the, uh, to the Galatians about what's really going on. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. What's going on? Verse 7, which is not another, in other words, it's not another gospel, but they make you think there's more than one gospel. No, there isn't. It's not another. But there be some that trouble you and would prefer the gospel of Christ. What's going on? Oh, we believe. Remember what we read there? They believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But they bring works in in order to be saved. Do we have to deal with that today with easy believism? With Catholicism, the Catholic Church? Oh yeah. We believe. But they're bringing in another gospel. They don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. They refuse to repent. They've never come to repentance before they believe. They never come to that repentance, that sorrow of the heart, that conviction. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which is, was preached unto you, let him be accursed. 
As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But if I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Somebody's coming in here and they're bringing in another gospel. Flip over to chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Then fourteen years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, and I went up by revelation and communication communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to them which were of reputation, by lest any means I should run or had run in vain. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. In other words, somebody was telling him, you need to get circumcised, you need to get circumcised. He wasn't compelled to get circumcised. Verse 4, And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out your liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus. You know when Jesus said it was finished, and he liberated you from the law of sin and death? That's not true. You've got to be circumcised to be saved. You've got to keep the law of Moses in order to be saved. Today, you've got to do the Eucharist in order to get saved. You've got to keep the laws of the church in order to get saved. You've got to become a good member of the Catholic Church. See how that works? That's what the liberty is talking about here. It's about your liberty which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Remember it was spoken of in, in Acts? Why would you bring him back into the bondage? The burden that we had, and we couldn't keep the law. Why would you bring the law back unto them and give, make, bring them under the same bo uh, burden that, that we couldn't bear? To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Some people are perverting this and saying, well, liberty here is just a choice, it's just a choice, and if they, get, they, go, they attack my liberty, I can just have nothing to do with them. That's not what it's talking about here. The liberty here is talking about salvation. Liberty is always connected to salvation, what Jesus Christ did on the cross. We are no longer, our body is no longer connected to our soul. We've been liberated from the law of sin and death. When we were lost, we were under the law of sin and death. The Levitical laws did apply to show us that we were under the law of sin and death. The laws were a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. We've been liberated from all that. We don't have to be circumcised to be saved. You did in the Old Testament. If you didn't get circumcised, you were cut off. We don't have to keep the laws of Moses to be saved. In the Old Testament, you did. Why? Because their body and souls were connected. We have liberty today because we've been freed from the law of sin and death. Why do brethren keep fighting that? Something to ask yourself, brother and sister Christ. But we need to refuse to compromise. Okay? When someone comes in and says, hey, what you're doing there is sin, and you're trying to say it's liberty, it's not the same thing as what's going on here. Someone's coming in here and saying, that gospel that you were taught, that's wrong. You need to do this over here. Another gospel. They come and bring it in another gospel. It's really not another gospel. They're trying to hide behind Jesus, but it's not really another gospel. It's fake. It's false. Those are the people that you don't, that says, that the, to whom we gave place for rejection, no, not for an hour. Okay, when you have a brother correcting another brother in sin, it's not the same thing. Okay, I just want to throw that out there real quick. But the point of the matter is, why is it when people come in with easy believism, I just link the gospel message to them and I'm done with them. I don't talk about the Bible with them, other than the gospel. Because they're lost. And if they reject the true plan of salvation, to whom we gave place for rejection, no, no, not for an hour. You don't spend an hour with them. Remember, Paul spent all day with the Jews trying to preach the plan of salvation to them. 
And they were listening. He was going through all the old Le Levitical laws and the Old Testament and the prophecies. And he was bringing it all the way up to Jesus Christ and then preached to them Jesus Christ all throughout the day. That took a long time. Okay. But when someone else comes in and says, uh, no, that, that, that gospel that Paul's preaching, repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you, that false gospel, you don't give them the time of day other than to preach the gospel to them. You preach the real gospel to them, they reject it, they want their fake gospel, you say, fine, take your fake, go your fake gospel and be gone. I'm, ha I'm not going to have anything to do with you. And that's how we're supposed to be. With all these false religions out there, we try to preach the plan of salvation to them. But if they come in trying to mess up the gospel, the true plan of salvation, we tell them the truth, and if they don't want the truth, get out. Get away from me. I want nothing to do with you. That's how it's supposed to be. Galatians 3.1 But you see there are people who are trying to t come in and tell them that you had to get circumcised. Hmm. No, and like I said, the whole point of this was that when we get to Colossians is they're trying to say that it's just culture. It's just culture. It's just culture. And it's so obvious that it's not culture when you're comparing Scripture with Scripture. Paul's having to fight this in all the, almost all the Pauline epistles. Jews coming in telling them that you have to keep laws and ordinances in order to be saved. And if you break these laws and ordinances... You lose your salvation. Paul's always having to fight this. Satan is always fighting against us all the time, brothers and sisters in Christ. You've got to stand firm in the faith. Verse 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Uh, stop right there. How many times have you tried to witness to the easy believers in crowds? I used to be part of the easy believers in crowds. So we can't give up on that. If God can save me... An easy believism, just worthless sinner, he can save them. Okay? But it says here, bewitched. How many times have you tried to witness to somebody in a false religion that has a, G a Jesus Christ, and you try to witness to them, and it's like the deer in the headlights look. It's like they've been bewitched. They're not listening to you. They're not listening to truth. They've been taught not to want the truth. Who hath bewitched you? That ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. I'm beginning to think the way he's talking is there was, there was people there that actually saw Jesus crucified. That might have been there. This only would I learn of you, re re learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Someone's coming in telling them they've got to keep the laws in order to be saved, and that's how you receive the Holy Spirit, by keeping the laws in order to be saved. You've got to be circumcised. Today, you've got to be part of a good local New Testament church. You've got to be uh, part of the Catholic Church. You've got to go through the catechism and get ordained as a Catholic member of the Catholic Church. Then you've got to start keeping the, the Eucharist, and this and that. And no. Are ye so foolish... Having begun in the Spirit, and ye now made perfect by the flesh. These people got saved. They were listening to the true plan of salvation, and they let somebody else come in that before he said, You give not, um, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. What happens when you give subjection for too long? They're going to start wearing and tearing you down and tearing you down and try to pull you away from the true plan of salvation that you got saved off of. And these people are getting messed up, and you have some, you can have someone who's saved under the true gospel turn its back on the true gospel and go off to uh, the easy believism and start preaching easy believism. I've seen it. Doesn't mean they're not saved. It's just they're not going to mount for anything as a Christian. It's the worst thing a Christian can do is turn their back on the true plan of salvation. Worst thing. I said for a Christian. Worst thing for the lost world is to reject the true plan of salvation. Verse 4, Having ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain, he therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, 
and it was counted to him for righteousness. There's where we hear it. Count him for righteousness. If Galatians is just Gentiles only, why does he have to bring Abraham into it? There was Jews present. Okay? Trying to tell them, bewitching them, and telling them a false gospel. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, 2, we read, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Christ will profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. If you believe you have to keep even one of the laws in order to be saved, you are now a debtor to all the law. That's Satan's deception. He makes you think that if you keep at least one of the laws, it seems easy. Oh, circumcision's easy. You get it done, it's done. You're good to go. No, because now you're stuck under the whole law. And it has to do with the heart, brothers, it's Christ. I'm not saying that if you got circumcised as a Gentile, you're lost forever. No, I'm saying God looks at the heart. But if you got circumcised in order to be saved, then you're held accountable to the whole law. And Satan loves, loves using that deception on people. All you have to do is keep this one part of the law. That's it, just this one part. No, you're a debtor to the whole law. Turn to Galatians 6. Verse 12. Through 12-14. through as many as I desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Who is persecuting the Christians? Well, you had some Gentiles doing it, but predominantly back then, well, who was doing, who's doing the persecution? The Jews. Uh, what was Paul doing before he, what was Saul doing before he became Paul? Who was going after the church? Who was hauling people into prison and having them killed? It was the Jews. As many as desire to make fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. They don't want to be served persecution. People give in to the peer pressure of the Jewish people. Okay, fine, I'll get circumcised. Fine, I'll keep the law. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. For God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. What did Paul say about everything that he was taught before he got saved, and everything that he did, his works with his hands, and his religion? He counted it all but dumb. All but dumb. I'm really going to try to run this home, brother, says Christ. What's going on? You had the back in, when this was written, the Bible was written, the letters, you had the Jews come in trying to keep people under the law in order to be saved. They brought in their own, the, 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 they tried to bring in the ordinance that God had set in the Old Testament, saying you had to keep those in order to be saved. You did in the Old Testament. But today we don't have to. And today the Catholic Church, Catholicism, is the ultimate counterfeit to the, the Jews of the, of the past. What was going on here, it's still going on today, but in the form of the Catholic Church. Okay. Satan is still trying to get you back under the law and deceive you into believing that you have to be, keep the law in order to be saved from the law of sin and death. He's deceiving you. Well, I kept this one law, but did you keep them all? Ephesians 2, verses 4, we're going to read all the way through 17. But God, who is rich in his mercy for us, uh, for his great, let's see, for, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with him, by grace are ye saved, and hath raised us up to, raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. How is that possible? The circumcision made without hands. Our souls are connected to who? Jesus Christ. He's our body. That's why we're called the body of Christ. Where's Jesus Christ right now? He's in heaven preparing a place for us. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, He might show His exceeding riches of His grace, the judgment seat of Christ, and His kindness towards us through, Jesus, through Christ Jesus. 
For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. He's having to preach salvation again. He's having to preach that we're saved by God's grace, not by the law, not by the works of the law, not by anything that we do. And you know those people that still like to be brought into the law, they like to pervert those scriptures, and it's no longer for grace are you saved through faith, it's by faith are you saved through grace. They like to switch that around because they still believe they have to do something in order to earn salvation. The easy believism crowd. It's not of works lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. What's he saying? The good works follow true uh, conversion. But you weren't saved by the good works. It was because you were created in Christ Jesus. That's why you're doing the good works. That's why you have the new creature in Christ Jesus, the new birth. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. When you get saved, God's going to come in and he's going to clean up your life. Sanctification, the do's, the don'ts, what you're supposed to believe in, the stands you take. Okay? That why, that's why we say if the Bible doesn't say it, you shouldn't be doing it. And I don't, I'm not talking about something like with people come back with, where's a car at in the Bible? We're talking about when you say, I'm doing this for the Lord, like He's commanded you to do this, I'm going to do this for the Lord, chapter and verse. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. No hope and having and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. Not, circumcis not, not physical circumcision. He just said it isn't. It's not by keeping the laws of Moses. It's nothing that you do. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. You know, what are ordinances? There's laws of commandments that are in, that are contained in ordinances. Ordinances can be laws. For to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. God's the one that makes us a new creature. In Christ Jesus, a new man. He's the one that gives us the new birth. He's the one that gives us a new life. And those who truly repent and believe, we give our lives to Him. We gave our old lives to Him and say, Lord, this life, I can't do anything to earn salvation. I'm wicked. I'm dirty. I'm filthy. Lord, take this life. It's yours. I, I, I can't do anything with it. It's worthless. And what happens? God takes that life and buries it with Jesus Christ. And He raises you up as a new man. You're still stuck with this flesh, but that whole point is the spiritual circumcision made without hands. Your soul is now connected to Jesus Christ. That's the new life you have. In Christ Jesus. That's the new life you have. Are you in Christ Jesus? Oh, yeah, yeah. You have a lot of people with words. Yeah, yeah, I'm in Christ. But what about your actions? Oh, no, no, that's works. That's works to be saved. No. After salvation, you're created in Christ Jesus. If you're truly connected to Jesus as the body, then you're to obey his commands. He tells you what to do and you do it. Sanctification. And came and preached peace to them which were afar off and to them which were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. I went a little bit farther than I wanted to. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Through Jesus Christ. We don't have to be circumcised to be adopted in. Physical circumcision. We don't have to keep the laws of Moses to be adopted in to the Jewish people. God did it. Jesus did it. And the household of God. And are built up to the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom all the buildings fit friendly together. Growing. Groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye are also builded together in, for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Brothers, this is Christ, Ephesians. He's having to explain the uncircumcision versus circumcision. 
Okay, how we got saved. We got saved by God's grace. Why is he having to tell someone who's saved? Remember, this is the letter writing to the Christians. This is the letter to the Ephesians, the Christians at Ephesus. Why is he having to go through the plan of salvation again? Why? Because I believe someone's coming in and screwing up the, the, the proper plan of salvation. It's God that does the saving. It's God that does the saving. Okay, go to Timothy. And then jump over to Timothy. 1 Timothy 1, 1 verse 7. How to use the law lawfully. Okay, verse 7. Desire to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. For the ungodly and for the sinner, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men-stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. According to the glorious gospel, the blessed God which was committed to my trust. Okay, how to use the law lawfully. Galatians 3, you don't have to turn there, but Galatians 3.24 says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified, justified by faith. Not the law, faith. Can we use the law today? Yeah, we can. But we're supposed to use it lawfully. We're supposed to show them that they're sinners. We're supposed to show them that the law, the laws of Moses, a lot of the laws, Levitical laws, don't steal, don't commit adultery. You know, don't uh, bear false witness, so on and so forth. Those laws that are schoolmaster to bring them to Christ. Why? Because we let the lost world know that they're under the law of sin and death. And because they've broken so much as one of the Levitical laws, the old laws that God has set down, not man, God set those laws down, you break so much as one of those laws, you're worthy of death. You're going to hell to burn for all eternity. That's your destination. It doesn't have to be your final destination, but as long as you reject Jesus Christ, it will be your final destination. What happens is you got people coming in and they're using, misusing the law and they're not using the law lawfully. They're telling you if you keep the law, you can be saved. If you keep the law, you can go to heaven. Paul had to tell Timothy that we are, we can use the law, but we have to use it lawfully. To remind people that the laws are a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The instruction in righteousness. That's the second way we can use the law. Lawfully. We can go through and say, hey, you see back here in the Old Testament, it said uh, fornication is a sin. Well, look at here in the New Testament, it's also still a sin. So we can use some of the things in the Old Testament, the Levitical laws, for instruction and righteousness for a Christian today to say, this is how you're supposed to live. This is what you're not supposed to do. This is what you're supposed to do. So the two ways to use the law lawfully for a lost person is it's supposed to, you're supposed to use it to bring them to Christ. You don't tell them they have to keep it to be saved. That's misusing the law. But to use the law lawfully with the lost world, it's used to show them that you're a sinner, you have a sickness, and Jesus has the cure. That's lawfully. The other way is instruction and righteousness. Instruction and righteousness. But he had to tell Timothy how to use the law lawfully. Why? Because people are going to come and try to tell him, oh, no, 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 you've got to still keep certain parts of the law in order to be saved. You've still got to do this in order. And he's, he's warning Timothy, you can use the law, but you've got to use it lawfully. Okay, turn to Titus. You say, well, this is a long way around to Colossians. Yeah, it is. But it's worth it, brother, says Christ. It's worth it. I pray you're still with me. I pray you're still with me. Titus is 3, 1 through 11.
almost the whole chapter. Put them in mind to be to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. To be ready to, I'm sorry, to be ready to every good work. To speak evil of no man. To speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived. Serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Is that going on today? Notice what it says that. For we ourselves also were sometimes. Talking about saved Christians can fall into this. They can fall into foolish. Remember what it is? What does it mean to be foolish? Acting like the lost world. Talking like the lost world. Looking like the lost world. Disobedient to the word of God. Deceived. Serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that the kindness and love of our God, our Savior, towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. This is also, I'm sorry, can a Christian, do I believe a Christian for instruction in righteousness? Be careful not to fall into those things, yes. But what it's really talking about is before we got saved, that's what we were. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. Why is it saying this? Because someone's coming along telling them that you can do good works in order to be saved. You can clean up your life and then get saved. No, you can't. What happens? God will clean up your life after you get saved. You need to come to God as you are. A dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinner on your way to hell and you deserve to go to hell for sinning against an almighty righteous God that's going to judge the world someday. That's what you come to God as. But according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou will affirm constantly. A constantly. Why do we have to affirm it constantly? Because there's a war going on out there, brothers and Christ. There's a war for souls. The souls of men. All souls belong to the Lord. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about all souls have to stand before Jesus Christ to be judged. Saved or lost. All souls. Saved souls at the judgment seat of Christ. Lost souls at the great white throne judgment. But we're, we're trying to preach the gospel to people. And we have to keep preaching that true gospel as much as we can. Why? Because there's, the enemy keeps coming in and trying to take that gospel away and replace it with false gospels. you got to keep the law in order to be saved. Keep the law in order to be saved. I will that you affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Yes, they are. If you're maintaining good works, works that are in the Bible, you're going to be separate from the world. The world's way is always going to be contrary to the Bible. Almost always. Or a counterfeit where it looks close, but it's a counterfeit. All right? but, afford, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies. You know, people saying, I'm a Jew. Genealogies and contentions and striving about the law. You mean, he's warning Titus there's people striving about the law. You, you have to keep the law in order to be saved. Yeah. For they are unprofitable and vain. When you get saved, the Levitical laws, the only profit we get from the Levitical laws is the instruction in righteousness. But to the lost person, keeping the law, striving about the law, trying to keep the law in order to be saved, it is vain. It's unprofitable, because you can't do it. And it's vain. It's worthless. In the end, you're going to realize how much you just wasted your life trying to keep the law, and now you've got to stand before Jesus Christ at the great white throne, when all you had to do was drop, stop going about to establish your own righteousness, keeping of the law, and turn to God's righteousness. Repent. 
and believe. Okay. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. When someone's coming in and saying, hey, well, what about this? Shouldn't we do this to be saved? Or shouldn't we do that to be saved? A man that's an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Today among the body of Christ, what I'm realizing is people don't want, for, want to do a first or second admonition. They just want to reject them right, on, right off the back. We don't have to do a first or second admonition. Uh, if it's a brother in Christ and they've gone astray because they've been led astray by wolves in sheep's clothing, you tell them, you go to them and try to tell them, hey, this is false teaching, this is wrong. For what we're talking about, the gospel versus the law. But we have major doctrines that people can start steering away from. I've heard brethren out there that are still, like I said, they're, going, they're taking off the helmet for hope of salvation, and they stop looking for Jesus Christ to come back any day. They stop looking. Their eyes are now on the world. Not on Jesus Christ, on the world. That's a false teaching. To say, well, I don't believe in the imminent return of Jesus Christ anymore. They've gone astray. Right. Verse 11, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinned and being condemned of himself. When people come in and try to bring you back under the law in order to be saved, they sinneth and are condemned of themselves. Turn to John. First John, I'm sorry. Somebody's like, John? First John. First John 3. First John 3, 1. We're going to read to 5. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. We've been, that spiritual circumcision made without hands, we're grafted in. Now we, when you get saved, spiritual circumcision, saved through Jesus Christ, then you can be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Once again, separation from the world. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. That's what it is to look for that blessed hope. Sanctification, living for God every day. You're looking at him. If, he, if you believe he can come back tomorrow... What are you going to get done for him today? If you keep putting him off and saying, Oh, he's not coming back for five years or ten years. What are you going to get done for him today? Not much. You're going to get lazy. And you're going to keep putting things off. But if you truly believe he could come back tomorrow, what are you going to get done for him today? How are you going to live for him today? What do you still need to get out of your life today? Whosoever commits sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Okay. But read verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is transgression of the law. If you're trying to use this body of flesh, sinful flesh, through the law, you're never going to make it. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. When we get saved, we are now connected to Jesus Christ, who is perfect. In him, there is no sin. He takes away our sins. The old man, dead and buried with Jesus Christ. Okay. Whoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. What are the laws? The laws are a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. I can't, this, I can't save myself. I can't keep the laws. I, this, I, I'm a sinner. Okay. I'm a sinner. I turn all the way back to Acts chapter 21. Now what I said about Paul. What happened to Paul? Acts 21:17. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us 
unto James, and all the elders were present. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. Remember, Paul was in a special office. That's why he says his ministry. He's the apostle to the Gentiles. Today I say God's ministry. We're all part of God's ministry. Through Paul's ministry, which had a special office through Jesus Christ, Paul said, Be followers of me as I am of Christ. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousand of Jews there are which believes, which believe, here it is, and they are zealous of the law. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. No, what he was saying was when it comes to salvation, the law is not going to save you. And we're going to show that here. Did Paul do some things that he didn't have to do in order to please the Jews? Absolutely. saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Talking about laws, not culture. Mm -hmm. And notice what it says up there, we already passed it, but where it said up there that they believe but are zealous for the law, this is what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. They believe, but they are zealous of the law. No, no, we got to keep the law in order to be saved. They don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Neither to walk after their customs. What is it, therefore, the multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Uh, Timothy, in, uh, in Acts 16.3, what did Paul do for Timothy? If, Paul, if that was true, that Paul was telling them that they couldn't keep any of the ordinances or anything, am I telling the brethren today that if you want to keep some of the ordinances, you can't? If you want, circumcised, you want to be circumcised, go for it. You want to keep a holy day that's in the Bible, where God says who, what the holy day is? Go for it. You want to keep the Sabbath day? Go for it. But when it comes to salvation, those things will not save you. That's what Paul was saying. In Acts 16.3 we read, Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters. He's talking about Timothy. For they knew of all his father was a Greek. 1 Corinthians 9.20 And unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, what Paul was talking about. And to them that are under the law as under the law, that I might gain them that were under the law. Did, did he do what was right? To please the Jews? Yes. Timothy, we need to get you circumcised or the Jews aren't going to listen to you. It's going to be a stumbling block. We've got to preach the gospel. Timothy's Lee's like, okay, I'll get circumcised. Galatians 2.3 says, But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. 1 Corinthians 9.21 To them that are without law, as without law, being not without the law to God, but under the law of Christ, that I might gain them which are without law. What Paul was teaching and preaching the whole time through all of this, and we're going to get to uh, Colossians. Go ahead and turn to Colossians chapter 2. This whole time, Paul's saying, that won't save you. Doing good works, and good works, according to the Bible, like the old Levitical laws and everything, which are good works, aren't going to save you. If you want to do some of those things after you get saved, after God saves you, knock yourself out. But they're not going to save you. What's going on today? What we're seeing today, like I said, with Catholicism, it's a complete counterfeit of the Jewish people. God has his chosen people, Satan has his chosen people. And they're a complete counterfeit. So even though we say works, uh, papal traditions, the traditions... Okay, there's traditions of men, and then there's the Old Testament Levitical laws, which today they're the traditions of men when it comes to salvation. They're not required for salvation. They were in the Old Testament. They're not required today. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians 
Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. Chapter 2, verse 11. Remember what it said in verse 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. What's going on today? You've got this perfect, not perfect, but you have a counterfeit out there trying to act like the Jews did back then, still going on today, saying you've got to do, you have to become, like being circumcised, you've got to be, become part of the church, but you have to go through us. And you have to do all this stuff that's not even in Scripture. And you have to do the sacrifice, the, the s sacraments. You've got to do this, you've got to do so many Hail Marys and your sins will be forgiven. You don't go to Jesus Christ to be forgiven. You go to, you go to Mary. Verse 11, Whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. That's where we get that, when I keep saying circumcision made without hands, circumcision made without hands. But 2.14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Blotting out? We're going to get back to that. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. But some people say, well, these ordinances are just culture. It's just culture. Then why is it against us? Stop and think, brothers and sisters of Christ. That was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. The Levitical laws were a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. They were nailed to the cross. You don't have to keep them in order to be saved today. Remember, Peter says, why are you putting a burden on them that we couldn't even bear? The laws are a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It's Jesus who saves. You can't save yourself. What's going on here? People are bringing you back under ordinances in order to be saved. The Levitical laws. Now we know that. It says nailing it to the cross. We don't have to keep the Sabbath day in order to be saved. We don't have to keep the holy days in order to be saved. We don't have to keep the ordinances, and we'll talk about some of those ordinances, in order to be saved. Galatians 3.21 says, Is the law then against the promise of God? God forbid, for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have come by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith that Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The laws are schoolmaster and raised to Christ. What's it talking about here? Ordinances that was against us. And it was nailed to the cross. Colossians 2.15 And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Jesus overcame the law of sin and death. He went, to, he went into the earth, down to hell, on the side of Abraham's bosom, and led captivity captive. Okay, verse 16, Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of a new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Now stop for a second. It says here, let no man therefore judge you. Is it a sin to eat any meats today? No. That's not what this is talking about. It's not talking about judging sin. Is it a sin to keep a holy day? One of the holy days in the Old Testament. Not pagan holidays, but holy days. Is it a sin? No. Uh, of a new moon or the Sabbath days? No. If you want to keep the Sabbath day, go for it. What's being judged here? Salvation. And how do we know that these holy days are talking about the Bible's holy days and not culture of men? Keep reading. Verse 17. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Today, the body is of Christ. We have that spiritual circumcision made without hands. What is the shadow of things to come? The thousand year reign of Jesus Christ? Do you not realize in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ that what you eat? All the Levitical laws are going to come back. 
respect of a holy day, a new moon, and Sabbath day, the judging and meats and drinks, all that stuff is going to come back. No. Victoria. Sorry about that, brothers and sisters. Those laws are going to come back. But the body is of Christ. This is not culture of the Gentiles nor the Jews. It's not traditions of men. It's not talking about traditions of men. It's not talking about rudiments of the world. It's not talking about whatever you can possibly come up with. Okay? Bible word, traditions of men, rudiments of the world. And I forgot the third one. But the Lord hopefully will bring it to me. But there's the Bible words, but they don't like the Bible words, so we have to go out and use the lost world terms like culture. Okay? That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the commandments of God that God gave to His chosen people through Moses. The Old Testament commandments of God. Today they become the commandments of men. When men tell you you have to keep them in order to be saved, they are now the commandments and doctrines of devils. But in the Old Testament, when it came to salvation, it was the commandments of God. A shadow of things to come. How do we know that the holy day there is talking about what's in the Bible and not some made-up day by people today? Traditions of men. How do we know that? Because it's, tradition, it's a shadow of things to, to come. The thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. Matthew 15, 6 says, And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have you made the commandments of God of none effect by your traditions. This was in the Old Testament. See, Jesus was going after them. They were bringing in their own traditions and subverting the commandments of God. Why? Because in the Old Testament, the commandments of God were to be kept. And the New, command, the New Testament, we're supposed to keep the, the law of God. Okay, We're to obey the gospel. We're still told what to do. We're still under laws. But we're under the law of God. The Old Testament, they're under the law of Moses. What's going on here? What's that judgment? It's salvation. But the body is of Christ. I don't have to keep the law in order to be saved. Why is this so hard for some, people, some of the brethren? And some of the brethren that are veterans. Why is this so hard for them? I don't have to keep the laws in order to be saved. But the body is of Christ. Those things that they're trying to judge you in, it's a shadow of things to come. We read in Matthew 15, 6, that's what happens when the Jews introduced culture over the commandments of God. Is it still going on today? Yes. Papal traditions from the Catholic Church, Catholicism. People bringing in traditions as the commandment of God. And you've got to keep these in order to be saved. No, I do not. I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus saved me. I can't save myself. Colossians 2.11 Now we read that. We're going to read it again. Colossians 2.11 In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. That's why it says there, But the body is of Christ. That's why in verse 8 it says, Beware lest a man spoil you through philosophy and feign deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. They get you to start going back to the world. Remember what I've always told you, brother and sister Christ? If, Satan, if Satan, Satan tries so hard to prevent people from getting saved, but Satan ultimately has no power to keep someone from getting saved, that's on you. That's on me. And those of us who have gotten saved by God, by Jesus Christ, he's going to mess up. Satan, oh, I can't. I, I tried to stop him from getting saved. He still got saved anyway. So I'm going to mess him up as much as I possibly can. Try to get him to go back to the law. Try to get him to go back to traditions of men. Okay. Circumcision made without hands. Ephesians 2:11. We read, "Wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circum the circumcision in the flesh made by hands." That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were afar off were made nigh by the blood of, of Christ. We are grafted in. Okay? Today, salvation is not the same way it was in the Old Testament. It's not. But as we see there, the ordinances... And all those things that's talking about the holy days and the new moon, it's not talking about culture. 
It's talking about the Levitical laws. How do we know? We're going to keep going here. Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. Jump down to 2, verse 20. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why is the living in the world are ye subject to ordinances? Remember, why? What's it talking about here? We're with the circumcision made without hands. Our soul is connected to Jesus Christ. When our body touches, doesn't affect the soul. It did in the Old Testament. It will in the future. Time of Jacob's trouble, I believe that part of it's still there again. The soul and the body is still connected. They don't have the same salvation that we have today. They have to repent, believe, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you, but they can't take the mark or worship the beast. If they take the mark and worship the beast, it taints their soul. They're, they're going to hell. There is no salvation for them. Okay? But we know when it says the shadow of things to come, we do know through the Old Testament, if you go back to, I think it was Isaiah, some of the prophets, they prophesied that the laws would come back. The, the sacrifices would stop, and the laws would stop, and then the laws would come back, and it talks prophesies of the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. And the laws will come back. That's why it says shadow of things to come. Luke 1.6 says, And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord, blameless. That's Old Testament. That's not for today. You want, to be, you want the righteousness of God today? You've got to go through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2.15 says, Having abolished in the flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make of himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Galatians 3.24, Wherefore the law was a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Colossians 2.8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after well, who? Christ. That's what's going on here. You're having people coming in and getting them under a false gospel. You're already saved? Yeah, but all you really had to do was believe. So all that extra stuff was just junk. So all you have to do is believe in your head and you're saved. So I need you to turn around and start preaching that too. And there's brethren out there that are doing it. They're falling away. They're turning their back on absolute truth. And will there be chastisement in their life if they're truly saved? Absolutely. Water baptism can't save you. The Eucharist can't save you. The local New Testament church can't save you, okay? I'm talking about you have to be part of a local New Testament church. You have to go to a Babel building in order to be saved. No, you don't, okay? And that's how bad it's getting. That's when we see it. With easy believism, we see it with Catholicism. Catholicism is now today going to the point where they're saying where they, they're trying to let uh, people that are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Atheists. My brain kind of hard to grab some words. Atheists today are, can be saved and be an atheist. You can be saved and be an atheist. That's how bad it's getting out there. Anything to get people away from the real plan of salvation. That's Jesus Christ. Okay. Colossians 2, 21 through 23. Here's the other part of ordinances. Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perishing with the using, after the com commandments and doctrines of men. Do you notice it says commandments and doctrines of men? What, but what, we, what was it talking about, the judging part? It's not a sin to eat certain foods. It used to be. It's not anymore. So that's not what's being judged. What's being judged here? Salvation. After the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. I had a brother in Christ that in his, uh, his frustration... Because I teach that this is talking about the old Levitical laws. And in his frustration, he said, Where is this at in Scripture? Where is this at in Scripture? Okay. When it comes to the circumcision and the laws of Moses, when enforced today, it's the commandments and doctrines of men. I want to say that real quick. It's the commandments and doctrines of men today. 
Why? Because when you're commanding that in order to be saved, it becomes the commandments of men. In the Old Testament and in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, it will be their commandments. It was in the Old Testament, it will come back again in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, a shadow of things to come. Leviticus 5, go back to Leviticus 5. What is this thing about touching? We're almost done. Leviticus 5. We're going to look up, looks like, where is this at in the Bible? Where is this at in the Bible? Well, that's why the Bible taught us, uh, told us in 2 Timothy 2.15, we're supposed to rightly divide. Okay? Leviticus 5. Verses 2 and 3. Or if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast. Are there unclean beasts today? No. There isn't. Or the carcass of an unclean cattle. Is there any unclean cattle today? No. But there were in the Old Testament. And there probably will be again in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. Or the carcass of an unclean cattle. The carcass of an unclean creeping things. And if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touch the uncleanness of a man, whosoever uncleanness it be, that a man shall be defiled withal, and it be hid from him, when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty. There were things that when your body touched him in the Old Testament, it made your soul unclean. And if you didn't follow the proper procedures, and even refused to follow the proper procedure for cleansing... You were cut off from Israel. It became a salvation issue. Yeah. Uh, jump over to uh, chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 20 and 21. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, the, that's, moreover, the soul that shall touch any unclean things as the uncleanness of a man, or un, any unclean beast, or any abominable unclean thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of people, peace offerings, which pertain unto the Lord, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. There were things in the Old Testament when it came to touching something and being unclean that was becoming a salvation issue. That's what it meant to be cut off from Israel. It didn't mean killed. Although sometimes death was, people did die. But ultimately it was talking about separation. You were no longer, you no longer received the promises that God gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're no longer you no longer have any business in the inheritance that God has for Abraham, Isaac, people, for the Jewish people. You were treated like you weren't a Jew anymore. You were uncircumcised, even though you were circumcised, like we were talking about. Why is today this doctrine and commandments of men? Because in the Old Testament is addressed to the Jews, God's chosen people, and any Gentile that was going to hang out with the Jews, servants, slaves, do business with them, they had to abide by these things. Okay. Acts eleven nine says, But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. Talk about Peter getting his vision from the Lord. In the Old Testament, you ate certain meats. You did you, these drinks that were, like we just read there, there's certain things where a priest would go to perform something, because now today we are the priesthood. They'd go to perform something, and they would be unclean for some reason. And they'd be cut off from Israel. Today we're the priesthood of the believer. What our body touches doesn't affect our soul. Mm -hmm. 1 Timothy 4, 3 says, Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Was it talking about the word of God? Well, we just read in Acts 11.9, where Peter has the vision. The Word of God says, it's clean, you can eat it now. I have made it clean. You also, to clean, you also pray over your food before you eat it. Mm -hmm. 
Once again, in the Old Testament, the body was connected to the soul. Now our soul is connected to Jesus Christ. Please, brothers and sisters of Christ, don't fall into the deception of, and those who are preaching this need to repent. Uh, Colossians chapter 2. It's not traditions of men. It's not culture. This is people trying to bring, in that day, in that time period, that people trying to bring them back under the law in order to be saved. And telling them that you're not truly saved because you didn't get circumcised. Oh, you failed to keep this holy day? You just lost your salvation. That's what's going on. That's what Paul is warning the Colossians about. Ephesians 2.6 says, and, he, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, the spiritual circumcision made without hands. We're connected to Jesus Christ, not this body. This body can touch a dead corpse and it doesn't taint the soul. It's just that simple. Touch not, taste not, eat not. Where is that at in the Bible? Well, I just read some things, just a small, there's lots of them, but it's just a few things. There's things talking about if you touch a corpse, you have to go outside the city, you're unclean. You touch this, you're, out, you're unclean. If this is happening to your body, you're unclean. Remember that in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, this stuff will return. That's why it says shadow of things to come. That is the biggest key for that, those verses. This whole, the whole chapter. It's a, it's a, shadow of things to come. All that stuff is going to come back in the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. The ordinances, the Levitical laws, circumcision for the Jewish people. Okay, It's going to come back hardcore because Jesus is going to rule and reign with a rod of iron. They will not have the spiritual circumcision made without hands, the shadow of things to come. In other words, that we are re what we're reading in Colossians 2 is not for today, it was for the Old Testament, and will be in the future. What I mean by that, it is written to us today, but what I'm trying to say in my notes is this. When it comes to judgment of salvation, it's not for today. That's what Colossians 2 is saying. When someone's trying to use it for salvation, it was in the Old Testament, and it will be in the future. But it's not for today. Someone tries to judge you on those things when it comes to salvation, uh, give them subjection, no, not for an hour. You're trying to change the gospel. Mark 7, 6. He answered and said unto them, Well hath the Zayas prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. There's people out there, like I said, when it talks about who has bewitched you, in Galatians, who has bewitched you, they got the deer in the headlights look. The Bible talks about them that kill you think they do with God's service. There's people out there that are so been brainwashed and so flesh-driven and it wasn't because they didn't have a choice. They had a choice. Go back to the story about Pharaoh, where God, Pharaoh, God, God gave Pharaoh a chance with Moses. He turned Moses down, I think, twice, and the third time God hardened his heart. And the fourth or fifth time it said, it said Pharaoh hardened his own heart. God gave these people a chance, not a chance, an opportunity. Opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to get saved the right way. They don't want it. They try to act godly, but they're not. And works, they deny them. They keep trying to do good works in order to be saved. They keep trying to obey laws of some kind, whether they're the Levitical laws like they did in this time period in, in uh, Colossians, or today the Catholic Church and all these daughters of the whore that have all these traditions of men, and you've got to keep all this stuff in order to really, truly be saved. Oh yeah, there's the belief in the, in, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, but you also got to do this to be saved. That's what was going on in Paul's time. When he got arrested, there was Jews there. We'll go over it again real quick. There was Jews there that believed. What was it talking about? Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But they're zealous of the law. And they, and they thought Paul was telling them they didn't have to keep the law because they still believed they had to keep the law in order to be saved. They didn't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. They believed but are zealous for, of the law. They did not trust the blood that was shed to pay for all their sins. They didn't believe it when Jesus said, It is finished. It is finished. He fulfilled the law. The law is finished to those who go to the cross. Repent and believe. 
Okay. We are fighting a war today, brothers and sisters of Christ. Remember Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We have a spiritual battle. We're fighting for the souls of men. Okay? We're warring against, today we're warring against easy believism. I put it down to just three categories. We're warring against easy believism. We're warring against Catholicism and all her daughters. And we're warring against atheism. And what makes it so hard today? What makes it so hard today? Easy believism has their own counterfeit antichrist, Jesus. Catholicism and all her daughters has their own counterfeit Jesuses. And what the Bible said about how through you, the Gentiles, the word, the word of God is being blasphemed by the Gentiles. I think it was the Word of God. The bottom line, the Gentiles are blaspheming Jesus, the real Jesus Christ, because they're learning of the fake Jesus Christ, that there's so many different types of Christ, Jesus Christ. And Catholicism and her daughters, there's a different Jesus Christ over here, easy believism. It's so hard to reach people today for the real Jesus Christ of Scripture with the real plan of salvation. There's not one person that hasn't heard the name Jesus Christ. Remember, 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 brothers and sisters of Christ, through everything that's going on out there today, we are still in a war, a spiritual battle for the souls of men, men and women. We still need to be handing out gospel tracts when we can. We still need to be laying out gospel tracts when we can. And like I said, there's some brethren that are getting messed up in the scriptures. They're really getting messed up in the scriptures and they're trying to twist scripture to justify sin so they can bring sin in and justify it. Okay, Colossians chapter 2, the ordinances it's talking about there and the holy day and the Sabbath day and the new moon that was nailed to the cross. It's talking about the Levitical, Levitical laws. When Jesus said, it is finished, he fulfilled the laws. He fulfilled the law of sin and death. He paid for the sins of the world. You want those sins paid for today? you got to go to the cross. Turn to Acts 20. We're going to end this with Acts where we started. Acts. Acts 20. Well, we started in 2 Timothy, but Acts 20. Sorry about that. We started in 2 Timothy, but when we actually got into the study itself, we started in Acts 20 when we started this long trek trying to show you everything that's going on. We started in Acts. Right? Acts 20, verse 28. Acts 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to the, all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, of your own selves. You mean brethren that have gone astray? Yeah. Of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. We read that, where Paul is like, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos. They're speaking perverse things. Oh, it's okay, sin's not that big of a deal. Oh, I can try to justify sin and, and, and mess up scripture just to justify sin. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And I leave you with that, brother, sister Christ. Night and day with tears. I pray for the brethren every night. Every day I'm praying for the brethren. I'm praying for you. That you stay the course. Satan's always trying to come in and he's always trying to get you away from the Word of God. He's always trying to mess up this book any way he can. Brothers and Christ, we need to stand strong and remember that our fight is spiritual and it's for the souls of men. 
We're, we're fighting to earn rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, how we live our lives for Jesus Christ, and we're fighting to win people to Jesus Christ. Point people to Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, through the real gospel. And we're having to wade through all this. It's like going through a, a you hit an area that's nothing but mud and that uh, garbage and junk, just nastiness. That's what we're trying to wade through to find that one person that wants to know Jesus Christ. Or this person over here that wants to know Jesus Christ. That's how bad it is today. But Paul's sitting here saying, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Are we seeing brethren fall away? Yeah. Are we seeing the wolves in sheep's clothing growing? And all these false religions growing? Are we getting close to the catching away of the body of Christ, that blessed hope? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you for following me on this long way around to get to Colossians 2. Some people said, well, you could have just read Colossians 2. I just really wanted to get it to you what Paul was going through. People were coming in and messing up the gospel. And it was primarily the Jewish people. Coming in and saying, oh yeah, I believe, but I'm also zealous of the law. We believe, but you also have to do this. Yes, the belief in the, in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, yeah, but we also have to do this. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. How many false religions out there are named after a guy, a person? Okay, you know, there's that part. How many people go to certain Babel buildings because it's that person they follow and not this, not Jesus Christ? So hopefully this helped you learn some things as we went around and walk over the scriptures. So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm praying for you. Please, 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 brothers and sisters, keep praying for me. Thank you for watching.